so one of the main concerns and also every time we ask about it whether it will replace jobs ai automation 270000 uh, employees on uh, on this right we have made the we are aware and how you integrate ai in the daily work right uh, so that is at the basic level digital clone and digital twin in your future it is possible uh, for you know instead of you you can send your twin to attend Uh, zoom meetings and all uh, overall it is good news uh, for us in uh, it industries we are we are working on the application layer when the ai uh, cost actually uh, the model cost actually goes down for the entire audit uh, uh, this is for a leading professional services firm we are looking at how we can improve the entire audit process by using agentic ai so i just want to start off uh, you know the conversation with um, you know um, uh, with whatever you spoke actually in bps event about slm so you were actually explaining uh, you know how big it is uh, small language models and how useful it is for it companies you know it's a huge opportunity you were talking about it so i want to understand like uh, you know uh, how what kind of use cases you are working right now at present you know with your clients yeah 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 they say yeah small is the new big right so first uh, i'll start by saying what are the advantages that we see in slms and so then the use cases becomes uh, right uh, evident so it, slms are one they are more cost effective uh, right the inferencing cost is much lesser than a large language model do they can be fine tuned for a specific context uh, large language models usually are trained with all the data that is available in public uh, forums this can be fine tuned for your context the specific data that you may have uh, within your organization as well hmm. then uh, the third big advantage is, is that you can host it within your organization firewall so that you can ensure secure handling of proprietary or sensitive data without having to go outside your enterprise boundaries so we see multiple uh, use cases right uh, like monitoring systems where you can detect unusual log patterns and uh, right uh, and then you can actually resolve that content generation summarization translation tools content moderation sentiment analysis right but more and more we are seeing domain specific areas where you are creating slms for a specific domain uh okay. so for industries like finance healthcare legal uh, right so in fact in infosys we went about creating a small language model from scratch right so we created what we call a made in infosys uh, right enterprise slm we further trained it with banking information on what is actually available uh, right publicly allowable data we trained it on banking domain and then we further actually tuned it with data that we have in our finical uh, right product that we own data that we own we trained it with finical data then what it does is that you are able to our finical teams are able to get very very right accurate trustworthy information on uh, right supporting the finical product itself now a lot of our clients have uh, also interest in using their proprietary data and creating small language models for their uh, domains uh, right uh, whether it in banking or telco clients etc they are all, all interested to actually create that um, we also created one more uh, which we call narrow transformer java which we have open source it is pre trained on uh, right uh, a star coder architecture specifically for uh, code generation in java for our developers and so we can because it is a small uh, model you can even actually run it from a desktop it provides superior performance okay. reduce image consumption etc yesterday there was one interesting conversation with google ex founder so he was actually talking about digital clone and digital twin he was saying that in future in near future it is possible uh, for you know instead of you you can send your twin to attend uh, zoom meetings and all but you know I, i didn't read about it but i want to understand how it companies are making use of this technology uh, what is it exactly and how it will be helpful for you um, are you working on anything uh, on digital twin 
Yeah, we are working on digital twins, uh, okay. right? We are on uh, so digital twins in areas like uh, right. Um, if you want to create a digital twin of uh, say in oil and gas, you want to create a digital twin of your equipment and the reservoir, right? And okay. uh, so you can actually uh, right. And we have been working on it on those kind of projects for quite some time. Right and okay. and uh, right. If you want to simulate if oil production actually goes down, right? What should you actually do so that the production actually comes up? Right? Where should you actually uh, uh, right add additional uh, water or uh, gas to in increase the pressure? So usually these models, uh, digital twins, used to be based on physics-based models. Uh, right? Uh, right? But now with AI, uh, you can actually get this to perform better by using the data and actually uh, so you, there's a terminology called uh, uh, physics informed neural networks so now okay. you can actually make this even better and you can make it perform uh, right as close to the real uh, right uh, scenario uh, the digital twins that actually simulate the real scenario and th through that you can actually optimize uh, digital twin is also in manufacturing uh, right uh, all, all the heavy industries, I think the digital twin actually plays uh, an important role. Okay. So in future in which you, you were talking about manufacturing, are there any other sectors apart from manufacturing, uh, the digital twin can be used? So oil and gas, right. manufacturing, then even in telco, uh, right, to be able to create a digital twin of how your network is actually having, then in okay. utilities for your smart grid, uh, right, you have your grid and now Grids have to become smarter, uh, right? Because you have solar power generation that is happening. There is uh, right, uh, right electric vehicle charging that is happening. So the loads are going up and down, uh, right? Uh, unlike previously, where you were generating in one place and you were just transmitting. So there right. again, uh, right? Because it is a dynamic, uh, uh, right? Uh, as it is becoming more and more dynamic, uh, the digital twin to be able to simulate the uh, uh, right the real life scenario in a digital twin and for you to actually adjust becomes important so those would be i think uh, right oil and gas manufacturing telecom utilities for the grid so those would actually be some of the other examples okay when we talk about all these technologies agentic ai is something that is being used you know I've been like, uh, you know, uh, hearing this term for the past uh, six to eight months. I don't know whether it was there previously, but everybody is now talking about that. So what kind of value that it can create your clients and uh, what exactly you're doing in agentic AI? Yeah. So, yeah, agentic AI is um, a big part of our conversations, AI, uh, across the uh, world right now with all of our customers. So yeah, the power of agentic AI, uh, right? Because you have reasoning capabilities. It goes from a general purpose tool to creating specialized agents and assistants and collaborators, right? And through agentic AI systems, you can now eliminate tasks, re-engineer processes, have, uh, right? With the human in the loop, you can actually have agents actually perform a lot of the tasks. And I'll probably give examples of mm -hmm the kind of work we have done, uh, right, uh, internally and also with the clients, uh, right? Uh, so, uh, for example, in Infosys itself, uh, we are, uh, right, we, have also, uh, we are building this uh, for our whole invoice to cash process, right? So today we have so many different clients and, uh, right, and in each of our clients we have, multiple different uh, statements of work, different project managers that we actually work with. And we have multiple uh, kinds of invoice, there are different formats, different portals in which you have to actually submit it, right? And then, uh, right, you have to, then once it is actually uh, different dates at which it has to be submitted based on the cutoff date that they take for the processing, et cetera, right? And it's a pretty complex process, uh, right? And we have a team, uh, right, centrally, that is actually working across the organization to be able to generate the invoices, submit the invoices, follow up on the collection, reconcile uh, right your transaction with uh, right the payment with the with the invoice. All of those things that they actually do, right? By using agentic care to do that, right? To be able to collect the information, even actually 
write and uh, collect information from email responses, pulling this information together, submitting the invoice, reconciling, all of that, we are using multiple agents to be able to do that. The value add that we actually get with that is that not only can the efficiency become better, our collections become better, right? Our uh, right uh, AR uh, and uh, right becomes uh, better and our DSO actually reduces, right? So that is an, uh, an uh, example of agent care. We are doing it with our clients uh, for an audit firm, for example, for the entire okay. audit. Uh, uh, this is for a leading professional services firm. We are looking at how we can improve the entire audit process by using agent AI. Right from process discovery, they need to be able to discover the process to be able to audit, to actually conducting the audit. All right, we have created agents like process discovery agent, uh, controls agent, audit disclosure agent. Right, all of those work together to actually do the audit process. For another client where we are doing product support, we are using the multi-agent framework to be based on the issue that get raised to be able to provide information for the person who is resolving that, all right? All the related information, right? Uh, based on documentation that is available on the product, uh, information that is gleaned from similar kind of issues that have happened, similar tickets, et cetera. So we provide a, almost a complete Wikipedia page on a specific incident on how do you go about for this incident, what could be the root causes, what is the probability of this happening, what, how would you go about actually solving that? How would you go about troubleshooting that? So we get all the information using a multi-agent framework. So there are many, many examples, uh, right? Yeah, in mm -hmm. banking, for example, KYC is another good example, order processing in the telco, right? Wherever you have complex business processes with multiple touch points, right? That is where I think agent AI can actually play a role. Primarily, uh, it is about a um, lot of the uh, immediate uh, uh, right benefits you are talking about is productivity, efficiency, right? But then also it can it goes beyond that, right? Uh, improving the customer satisfaction, improving the growth. And things like that. Okay, so I want to actually ask you about DeepSeek. See, uh, in ChatGPT, uh, I think two, three years ago when it came in and now a month ago, DeepSeek. So nobody thought that from $100 million, it is possible for one uh, reasoning model, the two AI model, to cost only below $5, you know, $5. Mm -hmm. So do you think it is possible going forward since you were mentioning that the cost factor has also come down over the years? So how, how can we look at AI in terms of cost? reasoning model AI, especially like, you know, deep seek, uh, you know, what kind of uh, new uh, technological uh, reasoning models, AI models that we can expect going forward and what IT companies will, what kind of role IT companies will play in this? So, yeah, I think deep seek uh, other than the model itself, uh, because they have actually uh, right disclosed how they have done some of these things. We see that they have used, uh, uh, right. They have come up with a, uh, a uh, lot of uh, uh, right innovation in the engineering process of how you go about creating model right uh, so for example uh, right in the pre training uh, right they use multiple token prediction right mixed precision training uh, right and then in the architecture they have this mixture of experts uh, right and uh, uh, multi head latent attention right so uh, post training chain of thought knowledge distillation reinforcement learning so they have come up with all of these uh, uh, right uh, engineering innovations that is able to bring down the cost of the model that they have actually created now for there are multiple implications of this uh, one is that uh, right um, the way that we uh, for us right we are i told you we were uh, we are creating small language models mm -hmm. we are looking at how we can use some of these innovations in the way that we create the small language models and uh, right and we bring down the cost of that uh, as well, right? The other, I think, uh, larger implication is that as the cost of AI uh, reduces, it is only good news for uh, mm -hmm. right companies like us in the IT industry because now the business case becomes even better, right? And you are able to take up much more, uh, right? As I was referring to in the uh, right, right in the in the response to your previous question, right? The ROI only becomes better, right? Uh, 
uh, right? Uh, your benefits, uh, right? And if your cost is actually going down, the ROI actually becomes better and you can take on, uh, right? Uh, the use cases, uh, right? Uh, is uh, You can take on more use cases for, uh, right? And deliver that for the same cost. And the individual use cases benefits becomes much better. And so I think uh, overall it is good news uh, for us in uh, IT industries we are we are working on the application layer when the okay. AI uh, cost actually uh, the model cost actually goes down. Okay, so one of the main concerns and also every time we ask about it whether it will replace jobs AI automation, but I know it won't replace it, it's complementing. But what kind of skill sets? So see there are. Um, the way we are actually uh, looking at is at three levels, right? We are mm-hmm. seeing that, like you said, uh, anybody who is coming uh, right uh, into the workforce has to be AI aware, right? Uh, it doesn't matter um, what uh, uh, specific technology they're working on, et cetera. They have to be AI aware. They should have skills like uh, prompt engineering. They should be able to use AI coding assistance. And that is what right? Uh, we also train when we actually take uh, people from the college, right? Uh, that they have to be yeah, aware, they have to be able to use AI tools in the day-to-day working so that they can actually be better in what they are actually doing, right? And today within Infosys, uh, we have actually trained 27, uh, 270,000 uh, employees on uh, on this, right? We have made them aware and how you integrate AI in the daily work, right? Uh, so that is at the basic level. Then we have uh, right uh, what we call AI builders and AI masters. AI builders are the next level where they have higher skills where they can actually create AI solutions. Right? They can do things like semantic search, RAG, right? Uh, responsible AI, etc. And these are integrating AI and building AI based applications. Right? And and then is actually what we call AI masters, right? These are very specialized skills where I talked about we you know, created our small language models. So experts who can create things like that, uh, optimizing the model, fine tuning the model, deploying models, and those kind of uh, skills that we actually look for, right? So for somebody who is coming in fresh to the workforce, I would say that they should at least look at being AI aware and uh, build those kind of skills uh, that I actually talked about. If you want to create uh, a career in AI itself, then of course you have to have much more deeper skills and you have to uh, right uh, be able to be at the AI builder or AI master level that I actually spoke about. Mm. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. It was very interesting, uh, you know, when it comes to technology, there is so much to talk about, to understand. <laughs> nice talking to you. Thank you for your nice. time. Nice, nice talking to you also.